In beta weekend number one, Team Legacy took Dreaming Bay. In beta weekend number two, Team Legacy built a golem army. The world is now asking, what is Team Legacy going to do in beta weekend number three? Team Legacy presents Fire in the Sky. Coming soon to a YouTube near you. Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you tales of Tyria. This week on Tales of Tyria, we've got all of the stories from Beta Weekend number three. Ladies and gentlemen, it was awesome, it was epic. We're bringing it straight to you, stay tuned. Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here on the Sound Strategy Network, partnered with TeamLegacy.net. We are your source for Guild Wars 2 news, insight, and discussion here every week, live from the Order of um, Lion's Arch area here that we got going on in the background. Uh, I am Bridger, I'll be your host for this evening. We're glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Tell a friend or two, won't you? Talesofteria.com is where you can find the show. All right, we are first going to send a quick thanks out to David, Andrew, and Marcus for donating in the last couple weeks. We really do appreciate it. It helps us pay for the website costs and the hosting of the audio files. So thank you very much, guys. If you guys would like to donate and help out as well, you can find a link on the right-hand side of the website. Feel free Free, but do not feel obligated. Also, don't forget to send us feedback, feedback at talesofteria.com, and follow us on Twitter to get all the updated information. At Tales of Tyria is where you can find us. With that, let me introduce everyone else going around the round table here today. Kai, welcome back to the show. Hey, glad to be back. <laughs> all right, glad to have you back. I think, uh, did we have you last week? We, we haven't had you for a long time. It's like... Yeah, it's was here last week, but before that, it was like a good month. A good month that's off, so... All right, good to see you again. Also joining us to give you the epic PvP perspective. Freelancer, welcome, sir. How's it going, Berger? Glad Doing. to see Kai back, finally. Absolutely, that's right. You weren't on last week. That's why she looked at like, why is Freelancer in a new well, place? I, I was ninjaing your chat. If that's you right. That's so, right. Yeah. He was. He was. He was just <laughs> trolling us from the chat. Also, a member of that chat. Great. Welcome, sir. Hey there. Hello, Good hello. So I hear there was something um, this weekend that we're about to talk about. It was something very important. Oh, yes, the beta weekend, number three. But before we go there, we've got a little bit of feedback and a little bit of news. Last week, we talked about whistleblowing when it comes to Guild Wars 2 or MMOs in general, and specifically the whole uh, thing where once people post a strategy on how to beat a boss in a dungeon or something like that, then it will feel like it cheapens the experience. That was called whistleblowing, and it, some people considered it an issue in other MMOs. Uh, Michael sent us a, a message and he said, I don't think it will be as popular or sought after since players won't feel as much pressure to chew through content because they won't need to in order to progress. Uh, so 
what do you guys think about what Michael says there? I mean, freelancer, you were you you, you were had had a lot to say about the dungeons uh, discussion and how it related to the WoW system, and you said you were even in a progression guild in World of Warcraft. So the fact that you don't really have progression per se in the World of Warcraft sense is that going to uh, sort of reduce the pressure that players feel to chew through content as fast as possible? I think no matter what you do, Bridger, uh, we're all human, so we're going to get to this point where we're going to want to be competitive. You know, I think it's silly, and I'm calling out all the PV ears because I've been there, to say that I'm not, there's no competition. I'm just going to enjoy the story. And, you know, everybody's going to get to that point, even in PvE, which, yeah, I did dabble in, definitely in BW3, where they're going to want to be able to do it faster and more effective, especially with the legendaries. I mean, you remember how many mats and stuff that we're, we're thinking you're going to have to get for those legendaries? It's going to come down to, even if you're a casual PvPer, you're going to want that that shiny greatsword, right? And you're going to want to do it in not two years' time, right? So that means that, it, theoretically, you're going to want to do it with a guild that can get you those materials fastest. And that's where the competition comes in. So, I mean, PvP, PvE, all around, I just see it becoming competition in the end because that's just human nature. You're going to want to get legendaries just as much as the next guy, and it doesn't matter how casual you are. You're going to want to do that as fast as possible. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Michael, for sending in that piece of feedback. We do like to get feedback from you. Remember, guys, if you have any feedback on this episode, you can send it to us, feedback at talesoftyria.com. Also, don't forget, you can join us live like we have the people in the chat room right now. Hello, chat room. Uh, they are all watching live to provide their rapid time, real time feedback here, and, uh, and corrections. And corrections. When we're, that's that's we call them the hive mind. So when we're yeah, like, oh, um, what's that uh, that a Surin, uh person from uh, Destiny's Edge? And then I just wait for the chat room and I just stall. <laughs> you know, um, oh, it's uh, oh, I love Felicia Day. She's so amazing. And then somebody like Zoja. I'm like, oh, of Zoja, of course. I mean, that's I knew that the whole time. I didn't need the chat room for that. So we thank everybody all for all providing our extended break. Felicia Day, and then I blocked out everything else you said so <laughs> <laughs> you got a thing for redheads then is that what you're saying <laughs> oh. all right moving on we've got the news this week we've only got a couple of uh, small uh news bites this week one of them is a brand new article from team legacy.net it's sort of a collaborative article if i'm uh, not mistaken here right freelancer this 48 hour marathon how many people do you have working on you with this article oh man we had uh mainly tl but we had a lot of alliance members helping out it was just um I don't know, a big thing, like you heard about recently that gamer that, you know, got a blood clot or something and uh, and died, and there's all these gamers getting ready for Guild Wars 2 that are, I, I guarantee Team Legacy is not the only one out there that's going to be all like staying up 24 hours, you know, playing at launch. So the, the whole idea of the guide was to reach out to those players that are going to be staying up for long nights and trying to encourage them to at least take the minimal steps to make sure that they're Half, halfway not a zombie when they get done, you know? Um, so, you know, we're, nobody's going to nobody's gonna go to sleep, all right? So obviously you have to leave sleep out of the equation because when we were, when we started the guide, right, the, it came back to, okay, how do we tell people to stay healthy? Well, you tell them to go to sleep. Well, <laughs> can't do that, so <laughs> let's figure out how we're going to do this. Maybe we can petition um, for cat naps, maybe. We can meet them maybe, halfway. Maybe. But <laughs> well, we have a little section in there on, you know, take, taking 30 minutes, uh, uh, like a 30-minute nap in between a raid will actually get you another, you know, three hours of gameplay. But it's it's all, it's very much based on the person, too. So we had to break it down to, okay, what affects everybody, you know? Not just people that are naturally, you know, vampires and people that are naturally hard, you know, to stay up all night. Um, so, like, things like vitamins, water intake, protein, 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 you know, things like that. It, it ended up being an incredible guide. I was very, very enthused with it. And the, and the neatest thing about it is not one person wrote it. We had people from the medical field. We had people that were hardcore gamers. We had professional esports players all jump into this guide and actually collaborate together. It was, it was pretty neat. I think we're going to do a lot more like that, too. Excellent. So if you guys want to check that out, I, I read through it myself and I was very surprised at the sort of high quality and sort of lack of super bias. It really just lays down the facts and says, listen, uh, this is the sort of accepted medical standard. Some other people say this. Uh, it's really down to taste. Which do you like better, etc. So it, ha it has a really, really chock full. It's also got sources all at the bottom. There's like a little bibliography oh, yeah. at the like bottom. The, so if you want yeah, to go the biggest your thing, Bridger, that we, we did was sources, 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 study, studies, because you always have those trolls. You and I both know Bridger. So it was like, okay, well, every little 
tidbit of information we put in here, let's link it to a real medical paper um, or a real source, and it ended up going really well. I was, I was really glad with it. All right, so if you want to check that out, it's called the 48-Hour Marathon. You can find it at ta uh, Tales of... You can find it at <laughs> teamlegacy.net. You can also find it uh, right in the show notes, which you can find on talesofteria.com. Or if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, you can find it right down below in the description. So uh, with that having been said, let's jump on to the next little piece here. This is a cool bit of information. We finally have confirmation that probably a lot of people wanted to hear about. Uh, in the original Guild Wars, when you deleted a character, the name for that character would be reserved for 24 hours. They have confirmed on the the, uh, on, on the forums, the dead are in fact a 24 hour cooldown period in Guild Wars 2 in exactly the same way. So, a lot of people were waiting to hear that news. There's not a whole lot to talk about, but I think a lot of people wanted to know about that, so I thought I'd throw it in here. I'm definitely going to use that. I'm going to be jumping in and I'm going to make like six characters or something or as many characters as I can and try to take all the names that I would use and then just go through like just choose all the no things like complete defaults and then I'll just go back and delete them and make the right character now that I know that this is absolutely the case I don't know are you guys gonna use this yeah totally I mean there's like five names that I want so I think I'm gonna go straight in make all my characters and then you know go back and delete them and remake them to how I want them to look and their story and things like that yeah, the main problem I have is that uh, it, it, we know that the Guild Wars 1 names you can sort of reserve for yourself, but I just want to reserve the name Bridger, you know? I don't want a two-word name, so I'm completely SOL. I can't make a Guild Wars 1 name and try to mm -hmm. carry it over because Guild Wars 1 only allowed two-part names. So that's unfortunate, but we'll see. We'll see if I can snag it before some troll does. We'll see. All right. <laughs> Next up on the list, ladies and gentlemen, we're going straight into it. The roundtable for beta weekend event number three. Now, there was, there's a ton of stuff to talk about here. So let's break it down. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the UI, the economy, and sort of anything that doesn't fit into any of the other categories. We're going to take a short break, then we're going to go into uh, world versus world, dynamic events, personal story, and structured PvP. But let's just start right on the top here. Guys, are you, I am so freaking excited right now, even though it's over. Like, I was really excited when it was over, and I couldn't figure out why, and I finally figured it out. The next time we make a character, it's not going to be deleted. <laughs> like, that's really yeah. kept me in check this whole time. I think the more powerful way of saying it, Bridger, is we are... Four, five weeks out. Can you? I mean, can you imagine that? Five weeks. So, if you think like, what are you doing this weekend and the next weekend? You're already halfway there. I mean, that's just, that's exciting in itself. So, and there's I'm good news. Scared. I mean, the Steam Summer Sale just ended, so I have a ton of games I want to get through in this like month of time we have until oh, yeah, we right? actually get to play <laughs> yeah. games too. Oh, yeah, man. it's gonna be nice. That's true. I forgot about all. Dang it. And oh, you know what? There's, there's oh. other PC games? Her? I forgot about the Steam Summer Sale sure. this weekend. Like, I have been keeping track of it every single day. And then the Guild Wars 2 beta hit, I don't even know what was on Saturday. I don't know what was on Sunday. I don't even think I checked it on Friday. Like, I might have missed the best sales ever. Uh, and it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> oh man. I'm just so excited because this whole time, even though I was having a whole great amount of fun while playing the game, I just felt like... Uh, I felt like I was not having as much fun as normal, and I really identified with the fact that, you know, okay, I'm feeling all these great emotions, and it's a whole lot of fun, but the knowledge that this character is going to be deleted, and I'm not going to keep any of the cr crafting profession progression at all, I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to keep any of this world versus world record that we're working for, it makes everything feel so much less epic, so much less, yeah. you know, permanent. I mean, that's what an MMO is, it's permanence, right? Yeah, that's the reason why I play MMOs. I mean, from the beginning, when I first started playing WoW, it was like I was working towards something. And when that whole aspect gets taken away, it's kind of like, well, why am I doing this? So I didn't get past level seven. I just kind of did loads of events right. and stuff like that. I just didn't want a level because I knew it was being deleted. I don't know if I put my time into it. So I guess I didn't really enjoy it as much as the other weekends when I knew that kind of my character would be there the next time. Great. Were you holding back at all with the knowledge that your character is going to be deleted? I know you were only playing structured PvP, but I mean, you got those glory <laughs> rankings, right? I actually did no structured PvP this weekend. Really? Yes, oh. none. Uh, I wouldn't say I even held back. I mean, I got to, I think, 21 by Sunday evening on my main guy. So, 
it was just like I was just playing the game. I did a lot of World vs. World, so there's a ton of experience going on in there, and we're going to talk about that later, I bet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just like I played the game as I probably play it. But I, 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 you're right, I didn't go as like hard as I would usually go, or I, I went on the other weekends, because I just felt like, eh, it's yeah. going to be gone. And I mean, we're going to play it in a month forever, hopefully. So, yeah. Looking forward to that. All right, so let's start talking about some of the new stuff that was in this beta weekend event, Vistas. Now, I was in the other beta weekends, and I was thinking to myself, God, this game looks amazing. I mean, you could just sit there and try to take, you know, a panorama shot of, like, Divinity's Reach or Lion's Arch or anything, and it just looks gorgeous. It looks like a painting come to life. And I was like, they got to do something more with this. And bam, here comes Vistas. And it's like, yes, that's exactly what we needed. We need these to show you, like, you know, look how awesome this world is, right? And just get these great shots that you wouldn't be able to get walking around. So, uh, besides just, obviously, the, hey, look how cool our engine is. I mean, um, Kai, what else do they bring to the game, Vistas? I mean, is it just something pretty to look at, or is it something gameplay? Uh I think it's, you've got the challenge in there as well. I mean, some of the vistas aren't just easy. You walk up to them and look at them and think, oh, wow, this is pretty. There are jumping puzzles. And sometimes it's not as obvious as other jumping puzzles. So you've got to, like, walk halfway across the map to get to a point that you climb and run across things. And then you get to finally the vista. So not only does it kind of add that aspect, but it also means that 100% map completions aren't as easy as they were. So the bonuses, even though they have increased, they are now harder to get. So I think it adds kind of a whole other level to completing a map as well yeah freelancer did you find any vistas that were like just too hard to get i mean you're the jumping champion did you find any that were too difficult <laughs> jumping champion um <laughs> I, I gotta tell you like i was a, i was a big fan of assassin's creed and i just felt like i was playing assassin's creed doing these vistas because that's all that's what it was to me all the other fans of Assassin's Creed out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's mm -hmm. you basically climb through the tops of the towers and, and go through the jumping puzzles, and you, you know there's this little uh, usually a bird or something there. But it was still, I mean, it was awesome then. It was awesome now. So I mean, it, I can't complain. Um, it was great. Some of the some of the vistas were sort of redundant. It was like they were trying to just fill in some space. Like there was a vista a couple places in World v. World that you just had to jump like on top of a rock, and that was it. <laughs> like there wasn't anything to it and, yeah. and then the vista was over like looking over the grassland and this very plain looking river and i'm like i don't really get the point of this um but then there was other vistas like in lion's arch and uh some of the jumping puzzles out in the corners of worldly world um obviously that's where i spent most of my time where i got most of my vistas and they were amazing so uh it was very much mixed but all together i think it's a great addition did you notice they sort of got rid of the points of interest like the requirement for them that was uh oh i didn't like, even notice they're that. still they're yeah. still there but you don't have to get them for a map completion anymore oh so, yeah, like now to... yeah so now to fully complete a map instead of getting uh the waypoints the hearts and the points of interest you have to get the waypoints the hearts and the vistas and i i guess for the sake of completionists i, I think that is the better choice but it's like they sort of threw the points of interest aside and to me I mean, having not played much PvE, I mean, I look forward to going to those points of interest because that's where all the, the fancy stuff is, you know, usually like where all the developers spend a ton of time making it look nice. And I didn't see the same quality on the Vista, so personal preference. One of the things that disappointed me on the Vistas is is part of the thing that makes this game beautiful is like looking into distance shots, right? Because the like we've talked about in the past how the backdrops and like they basically looks like the further that you look away, the more it looks like concept art, like this just amazing piece of backdrop. And I saw way less of these like look from really far away and get this great panorama and a lot more like let's fly and zoom in around this one thing. And to me, I feel like that's like, okay, that's a really cool idea, but you're only taking it halfway there. I'd love to see way more of like, uh, for example, like in Queensdale, like I'd love to see the camera shoot up and just get this epic panoramic shot of Divinity's Reach, like from, you know, 50 feet off the ground, just zooming around it like a helicopter would almost from, you know, a half mile away. I mean, that you know would be an amazing one. Yeah, Bridger, I, I would. I think I would appreciate. It's going on what you just said. I think I would appreciate the vistas more if it was like, uh, you know, where if it, when it zoomed around the environment, especially when you got on top of a mountain or something, 
if the draw distance and the polygons were increased to the point where it'd be like Skyrim, you, you ever climbed to the top of a mountain in Skyrim mm -hmm. and looked out towards the distance, you can see every little tree, every, you know, uh, at least I hope you could, because if you did, you're missing out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, if you could, it was, you know, it was amazing. It was like, you could take a screenshot and put that as your wallpaper on your desktop, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whereas you climb to the top of a mountain or, or such in Guild Wars, it's fine, it's great, don't get me wrong, it's positive, but it, it's not picturesque, you know, it's not something you can lay as a wallpaper by itself. And um, I think if they increase, like, if they add sliders where you can increase, like, the amount of polygons maybe you can show at once, or I guess they call them, um, uh, there's a term for it in Guild Wars if, if you're looking at it, but um, the amount, basically the amount of objects around you, I think that would increase it a lot too. Yeah, it, it, there, there, I mean, there's another way they could have done it. Right now, it's all rendered in-game. And when I was showing those things before, don't mind the stuttering on that. That's a frap, so it's going at a very high bit rate, and I'm doing all this other stuff. So that that is not what it looks like in the actual game or what my video looks like. But um, the idea being that the the vistas are all rendered in real time in the game. as It's just the full game engine. Those aren't videos. They could have taken videos of that Vista shot. Now, it wouldn't have your character in it. It wouldn't have other characters. It wouldn't be the current, you know, game uh, it, it state, essentially. But it could look a lot better if they did it on a super beefy computer and specifically for those videos, they, you know, tricked out the view distance and the draw distance exactly like you're talking about. So that's another way to have done it. And maybe that's something they'll incorporate in the future. And, and see, see, real quick, this is our chat coming to the rescue. That's why I love them. They're saying a lot of and again, I didn't do a ton of PVE, but a lot of people in chat are saying even though the points of interest weren't labeled, they still counted towards your map completion. So oh, there you go. So maybe they are still in there. So now there's four things yeah. you got to collect, which really just adds to the length of the game. So I, cool. I, I do like the, the points of interest. I mean, the fact they name specific locations gives you a lot of insight. You don't have to walk up to a character and go, whoa, tell me about this place. It just says it right there. You know, the vi the Vigil headquarters or whatever. And then you go, oh, I've heard of the Vigil. Now I know where their headquarters is. You know, you don't need to, yeah. to, 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 to go in through like a dialogue choice. Just the fact that when you walk by it, it says, hey, you've discovered this thing. It's really nice to see. So um, let's see. Uh, did anybody have any hard time getting to any particular Vista? Was there any that was like difficult? I think the one in Lion's Arch where you have to get that little item from the NPC. It trolled me ah. for like a good 20 minutes because here I am. I'm a mesmer, right? The obviously the superior class, but we are without a jump. You know, we're without a <laughs> ride the lightning or a, or a warrior leap. You know, everything else we're superior at, by the way. But um, <laughs> but here I am trying. I'm looking at this rock coming out the water, and I'm trying to jump to it. I'm trying to blink to it. I'm like, man, this thing. I had to type in Gil chat. How do I? get to this friggin' thing and it turns out there's an NPC probably laughing at me the entire time. <laughs> he stayed right <laughs> I just, there. I just had to talk to and it would have allowed me to jump over. That was the hardest one for me. Yeah. I saw that actually. I, I was like, what's this guy doing here? Let me ask him, like just curiously, before I even started and I was like, I'm so glad I talked to him at the beginning because it does not look like I would have gotten there without him. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe if I'd use Ride the Lightning, I guess. Uh, but uh, I, I actually just played with the staff the entire time. I never went with daggers except in PvP because I just said, screw it, I'm playing World vs. World pretty much the whole time with my Elementalist, so uh, screw it, I'll bring a staff. But we'll get to that. All right, uh, so the gem store, pretty much flushed out and more complete than it used to be. Uh, we have a cow finisher. Let's talk finishing. <laughs> the cow finisher. I didn't use it, but I did read the tooltip. It sounded pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this on a previous show. I guess there was a, a Reddit post that somebody, or, or maybe a post in Guru, where somebody had suggested, you know what would be an awesome thing in the gem store is, you know, special finishing moves, like special animations or something. They took that to mean like, okay, let's kill players. Let's add finishing moves that sm smother players with various types of animals. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but they got the cow finisher in the gem store and they had like three other different kinds of animal finishers in the uh, in the PvP. Maybe it was just they, if you put one animal in, you can just throw all the rest of your c c animal models <laughs> in as, as finishers. Maybe we'll see something better in the future. Um, so nobody actually got to see it in action. Yeah. I watched, uh, I watched because we have our structure teams, um, the EU team and the US team, they were all trying them all out. So there's like the rabbit finisher, cow, um, there was, uh, I believe, something like a deer one, I think. Uh, yeah. But there was a so. whole bunch of them. They were trying them out. 
they all centered in on like the rabbit one because I think you get a lot more of them than the others. But uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, it just basically, you do your normal finisher, but then you do something crazy during it, and the the timing and stuff is the exact same. So it's just for cosmetic and sort of to troll as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. So yeah, essentially. Um, so the gem store kind of looks to be in its final state. And we've got, you know, boxing gloves and we've got the idea of things that are going to be in there. I'm positive that we'll see way more things be put in there. I mean, let's be honest. We're not expecting the only, you know, town clothes to be the ones you start with and the chef's hat, you know, the chef's outfit, right? We're going to see way more than that. We're going to see pirates outfits, witch costumes for Halloween, all kinds of stuff. I mean, Kai, did you play a lot of Guild Wars 1? They had crazy amounts of, they had wedding dresses and tuxedos. I didn't actually, I didn't play a lot of Guild Wars 1, but I have actually looked through all of the costumes and they are mental. They, I mean, it reminded me very much of like the League of Legends skin store. Like there are tons and yeah, I'm looking forward to having like all the costumes. Uh, great though, here's a question. With all these crazy costumes, does that break your immersion? <laughs> no, of course not. No, it's these things part are supposed of the world. to be in... <laughs> it's obviously part of Tyria. I mean, there's portals and stuff going all over the place. So, of course, someone's going to step through from, like, a different dimension or something and have, like, a bo pair of boxing gloves and a chef hat on for some reason. <laughs> there you go. Explained. Right there. Here I Bam. <laughs> Tales of I should be on the lore episode. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. You got it covered. All right. Let's see. What else do we got here for the gem store? Tournament tickets. Now, that's, I mean, this is the first time that the tournaments, the, the paid tournaments are in effect. Now, am I, am I right in saying that the only thing you get from the quote-unquote paid tournaments with the tickets you buy from the gem store, the only thing you get is better, re you know, PvP reward chests with higher chances of getting good stuff in it? Is that the idea? So far, yeah. So far. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, we all know that they eventually they're going to release like a way of creating your own your own tournaments. Yeah, you, know? um, you know, of course, Team Legacy is doing our prize pool tournament, but until they release that functionality, right now, all it is is just fancier loot. Yeah. So, I mean, if you got, you know, that way, you know, pay to win. I mean, you can win by looking stylish in PvP. <laughs> so you can you pay what, to though, win. Speaking of looking stylish, there are some our uh, our structured guys were. Lincoln and chat like all these different sets and stuff and I didn't realize it but everything in structured PvP like you can find in regular PvE one way or another just in structured it's a lot easier to collect them. You mean the skin? So skins yeah so like uh, everybody knows I was running around with the Jotun sword everybody was asking how'd you get that sword because I had the particle effects but it turns out there was one exactly like it in structured PvP that had some really fancy name and stuff so the theory is, I was going down Structure PvP collectibles list, uh, went out there and looked at that, and then I uh, went through and looked at the auction house, matching names to see if I can match models, and even the, the really fancy stuff, it turns out that there are, you can get them somehow during PvE, so I'm sure there are some completely epic ways of getting, like, the legendaries in Structure maybe as well, um, but uh, it's interesting how they're doing that so that you have two different ways of making your character look, you know, completely awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And they do look awesome. Like, I, not this beige weekend, but the last one, I got, like, a ton of tournament PvP gear. And as an elementalist, like, the cloth gear I got were amazing. Like, some of the dresses and stuff for, like, a female elementalist were, they were really cool. And loads of people were like, oh, my God, where'd you get that? And I'm just like, oh, I should PvP. But they are worth it, definitely, if you're into that kind of thing. All right. Who doesn't want to look cool? I don't, I I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. I want to look cool. <laughs> Everyone I mean, wants our to look more, cool. Our most hardcore structured PvP is where care care more about the way their head looked than <laughs> never <laughs> mind. Now they also had the uh, the whole break it down and put it in the Mystic Forge thing and get out a new cool skin there. So uh, was there any? I didn't see any real controversy about that. People seemed happy with that system, so they could sort of you know if they get stuff they don't want, they break it down TF2 style. But this seems much more forgiving. You know, you get like an item token, like a, I, think, I would assume it's like a great sword token or you know a. a a longbow token or a chest, you know, light chest piece token, and then you could combine it with, you know, the couple of the other things to create a specific item that you wanted. So it seemed like it was working as intended. I didn't see anybody complaining about that system this time. Did anybody play around with that? I didn't get a chance mm -hmm. to, no. No, no, I didn't mess with that much. Um, not as much as I wanted to, anyway. It just seemed like, uh, you know, going into the Mystic Forge and stuff, like, the whole, that's all, long, it seemed like that's all long-term stuff. You know what I mean? Like, Everything you're going to be doing with the Mystic Forge is something to either upgrade siege weapons in the long term um, or getting your perfect, you know, armor set. 
Um, mm -hmm. It didn't seem like anything anybody really messed with in BWE three because uh, what's the point? You know, what's the point of blowing all of your gear and stuff when you're just going to be deleting your character anyway? So, all right, dies are now tradable, and I think um, freelancer, <laughs> you had a uh, a particular. <laughs> Oh, like, no. oh, they're tradable? In that case, I'll just take all the things. Like, here, we got if a screenshot here, I think. Fest, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Freelancer's all the things picture. He's got all the dies. <laughs> did you, you, did you actually get all 400? Measure. What's that? Did you actually get all 400? I had 362. Wow. So, yeah, I didn't get all 400. There are a wow. lot of rares rare missing. But, uh, yeah, that little scroll bar goes down quite a ways. Very but, uh, impressive. Yeah, I sat there while waiting for cues, like switching between sort by hue, sort by material. So you just bought <laughs> just them all the off the trading post. Yeah, see, it's the way I manipulate like any item. It, it's far easier to do with unidentified die because half the market didn't even know it existed in the market. So I was like, this is awesome. And, <laughs> you know, so I'm buying them out. Like, um, you know, I monopolized them first, and then I did a min max, and, and next thing I know, I had like 800 of them. Then I did it again the next day. I had about, and it's on my stream if you guys want to watch and laugh along, but I had like 1,400 die in my, in my inventory at one point, like unidentified die. And I spent time just click, click, click. Like you could see me for a solid 20 minutes click, clicking my die. Like I wish I had a macro. And um, then like I ran into the problem of not having enough room to hold all these die. And then the guild was, <laughs> the guild was making those jokes. You remember from earlier Tales yeah. of Jerry episode where they're like, I why can't, can't I hold, hold all these die? <laughs> 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 it was hilarious. And uh, then I just started trashing them because I, I couldn't sell anything more. I'd maxed out my sell orders, and it was hilarious. But it was completely pointless. I do not recommend you do that at home. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Didn't you wind up with 18,000 gems at the end of this entire thing worth 125 gold? <laughs> Doesn't sound pointless to me, my friend. <laughs> Well, see, that's when you uh, you plead insanity and realize that the world is ending, literally. <laughs> <laughs> that's certainly part of it. I mean, nobody was caring about their money. They didn't care if they were throwing it down the tubes. They didn't care if they were giving it to Freelancer because it's all going to disappear. So I'm sure we'll see people act a lot more frugally when the game is launched, right? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, see, like, I had, I had the Commander icon and all that stuff. You know, what was that, 100 gold or something? But... Um, you know, I got a lot of help from the guild members as well. I think any guild that can get together and like sort of help pull money. I must have got, uh, according to our spreadsheet, like about 60 ish gold worth of, um, you know, people contributing to the guild. And so it ended up to me, and then I would use that money and manipulate the market, basically expand that like you would do a stock. And uh, ended up with like three to 400, 500 gold maybe, but. We had gone through such an epic round with uh, Gates of Madness and Fort Aspenwood, and then the next time went around, we mass upgraded with uh, against Maguma and Isle Janthier. Mm -hmm. And so we went through like 100, 150 gold just doing that and um, ended up with a lot more. But I was I was glad that, um, you know, we I was able to actually further develop the economic strategy so that when me and you, Bridger, we do our video for everybody, um, I actually have a lot more concrete uh, footage and such that we can share with all the Tales of Teria fans and such on how how do you take 50 gold from your guild members and make it 400, you know, make it some video like that. Excellent. I'll, I'll just be having freelancer loans. Hey, freelancer, <laughs> can I borrow some gold? <laughs> so, it's just power, it's power trading. It, it's, not a, it's not for everybody. It's... I was sitting there for four hours at a time, you know, at the trading post. But, yeah, it's it's not yeah. like you just oh, I just I'll just do this one thing and it's automatic yeah, money. It's, it's not like the question mark guy that comes on. Guess what? The trading post is going to give you free money and you don't have to do a thing. <laughs> so I don't know. That's why I tell that I tell my my age guilds there. and stuff all the time. Like on Guru, they they send me PMs and it's like, how'd you do that? Or did you find a glitch? It's like, no, I didn't. And I'm not special. Anybody can do this. You just need to. You know, I, I trade stock in real life. It's not too much different with the gold gem exchange. And with these prices, you just have to do research. Okay, everybody starts. What's everybody going to have right at the get-go? Copper. How do you adjust the price for inflation then? What is everybody going to move to in about uh, 12 hours? Iron. Well, iron's going to be scarce then because, you know, and then you manipulate all of that. And it's not hard to follow. It, it, just anybody that does the, that puts in the time for research can do it. So, well, we'll have to make a 
cool video. We'll right definitely there. do a, a video on economics, economics, and uh, and how <laughs> not to uh, and how not to lose your money to freelancer. I think might be the title. <laughs> All right. So this doesn't apply to Mr. Moneybags over there because he has no idea what the value of coin is at this point. He's got so much. He's like, yes, I want that. Make it mine. Um, but what did great? What did you think about the actual final? I mean, we're we're closer to release, right? The the prices of the gem prices in the store are probably close to what they're going to be in the final release. What do you think about the prices? Are they too high? Are they too low for the various things like boxes of fun and boxing gloves? Like, let's say not the boost, like the cosmetic items. Are they too high, too low? Well, I think they're uh, at a point where they're they're going to fluctuate a lot more, I, th I feel. I don't think they're actually that certain on like what, oh, really? what they're going to go to. Yeah, I think they're going to change a lot more. Um, I think the things that are going to be actually some of the most expensive are going to be like those cosmetic, uh, the, the, the stomp animation ones. I just have a feeling the like those are going to, those are going to be the ones that draw in like so many people to come and, uh, snag them. But, uh, I mean, what was the, what was the rate? Like what does $10 get you gem wise? It gets you 800 remember. gems. $10 US gets you 800 gems. Um, and actually I saw a lot of people like, what the heck? $10. What happened to microtransactions? Sit down and shut up. Because, no, I don't mean to be that mean, but listen, the, the reason that every microtransaction system in the world uses an intermediary is because Visa and MasterCard and PayPal and any of these other transaction uh, entities take a small chunk out of every transaction. So if you're buying something for 99 cents on iTunes, Visa or MasterCard are probably pulling off the top 10 or 20 cents out of that transaction. On a transaction of like a couple, uh, you know, tens of dollars at the supermarket, or 100 bucks at the supermarket, you know, it's like 20 cents or, you know, a half a percent, whatever's bigger. That's probably something like that is what Visa or MasterCard would take out. And so as a result, on those things, the supermarket doesn't care. They lose a tiny, tiny fraction of their profit. But when you're selling a 99 cent song on iTunes, well, Apple takes actually a pretty big hit every single time that you, you know, buy an app or something just by itself, which is why, if you'll notice, when you buy an app or a song on iTunes, it will not process immediately. They will wait a few days hoping that you will buy yet another thing so that they can process two transactions in a single entry, and that way they avoid to be double charged. So that same reason applies to how Guild Wars 2 works. That's why you can't simply throw your credit card in there and click buy now, you have to transfer it into, into gems first because that way you can have microtransactions and not have ArenaNet lose most of their profits to Visa and MasterCard. So hopefully this, this day in real life economics brought to you by Bridger will uh, alleviate some, <laughs> of the mis the, some of the confusion that I've seen people throwing around there like, why do I have to pay $10 for the gems? I only want Everybody $2. Everybody in chat and, and listening to this podcast is now like, 13% smarter. Yeah. Okay. So people in chat are saying like Amex is 5% and uh, the rest are 3% as, uh, as to what they take from the thing. But I'm pretty sure it's like 3% or 20 cents, you know, whatever smaller. So something to that effect to make sure that they take a good chunk uh, every time they get those transaction fees. So yeah, it, it, you're right, great. It might not be certain. I mean, it is the final beta. We have to assume that prices will change, but they seem like they've been pretty steady, the three beta events. So certainly see. Now, you're talking about the, the, the finishing moves being the big draw. Now, the thing about those that I didn't quite expect, but thinking about it, I should have expected, they're consumables. You can't simply buy them once and then yep. have that finishing move forever. You gotta keep coming back for another taste, baby. You got that cow finisher and it's really <laughs> awesome and you love to humiliate your opponents with it. Oh, I know you like that cow finisher. I got some more here. First taste is free, but the rest you gotta pay for, buddy. You can't just have everything. So, uh, uh, man, that's going to be so much fun, though. I can imagine they're going to have a lot of fun coming up with new finishers. I can also see I, uh, sales happening, too, on the gem store. They like, have a buy sales it now pain. for, like, 50% gems or they something like that. They have a promotions yeah, they pain. they should do that. Like, how much does the Steam sale make? Like, I never buy games until there's, like, a Steam sale, and I'm like, buy all the games. So I'm like, the same <laughs> with Guild Wars 2. I'm not going to buy anything. There'll be a sale. I'm like, buy everything. That's so, absolutely yeah. what they're going to do. They've stated that that's what they're going to do. There's a pain in the gem store called promotions, and that's where the sales yeah. are going to be. Okay. And I I thought they said that they were going to change them every day this weekend, but maybe that didn't actually wind up happening because I looked at that tab a couple of times. I didn't see anything. Maybe it was bugged. Uh, but I don't know. We'll yeah, definitely see that. I'll buy, you know, like this week only, get an extra bag slot. Hey, you know you've been aching about your inventory. Get an extra bag slot. 25% off. Come on, you know. 
<laughs> oh man, I'm gonna lose so much money to that stupid store with the sales. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I can feel yeah, it. Yes, I would uh, rather pay a subscription fee every month than to have the gem store because I know I'm gonna spend way much more, more money. Than 15 oh no, bucks. she's opening up Pandora's box here. Oh no, Ooh. she just said she'd rather a subscription fee. <laughs> I, I would start. totally rather a subscription fee. I would pay like ten dollars a month for Guildhall's Day. Easy. Who is who is this Kai person? I don't know. <laughs> <anyone>. All right, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Uh, let's talk about Hunger Royale, ladies and gentlemen. Best, best finale ever, or best finale of all time? Come on, which one was it? Easiest finale to break. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. I had so. the best time. I had the best time. So let's describe it. Uh, great. Did you participate in the finale there? Oh, yeah. I was there. It tell, was... tell me about it. Tell the listeners. For people who weren't there, what exactly was it? It was they, they ported, like, everyone. I guess it was all servers were included in this. And they threw them in the, the what was the Azura starting area? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. What's the name of that place? Metrica, Metrica Province. Metrica Province. Yeah, yeah, that one. And it was empty. No, nothing in there. It's, like, barren except for players. And the players are spit in, split into many teams of, like, different, I think it was gold, red, blue, and... Hey, that's me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's my commander icon there. I was like, is that me? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, so anyway, they split everyone in these teams. And if you're familiar with either the Hunger Games or Battle Royale, you know they throw these people in this, like, sort of area, and they have to kill each other. And they, that's the goal. And that's kind of what they did in the, in, for the finale. And it was there was, like, resources you had to manage. Like, you had uh, food and ammunition you had to take care of, and your health was decreasing, and the only way to get more health was to eat food. So you were, like, running around, like, I gotta find food. But then it's like, I'm out of ammo! And you gotta go beat some guy up with your gun, and it was... It was pretty cutthroat at times, not gonna lie. It was, pretty cutthroat. it was like the zombie apocalypse without zombies. People were just killing each other because they were putting an arena with each other and not for any other reason. But I uh, took a different tactic and I won, so it worked. I didn't you ran anybody. away, didn't you? I I literally had <laughs> like food? my entire guild just following me around and they killed loads of people while I was collecting all the rations <laughs> and they were like, Oh my god, I've died of hunger and I'm like, oh, 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 I have ten rations. <laughs> And um, in the end, it was like me surrounded by about 50 golems, just like dropping ammunition and finding me rations. And they'd go and find a bit of ration and like hop up and down so that I could see it. And it was really cool. It was just like me and like the entire server of golems, just like, woo! Right at the end. Yeah, it was really good. It was it was very clever. And and like you said, uh, the, the trick here, though, is I don't know why this is going so slow. I think Twitch is just loading really slow. Let me pause it and then I'll catch it up. So the, the trick here was that when you killed a player, they dropped all their supplies, including including their rations, ammunition, and all of their special effect abilities. Like, there's exploding rations that you can place on the ground that makes other players die if they try to grab the rations. They, like, take damage. Then there was, like, the, the, the stealth cloak. I juked so many people that were chasing me. I popped on the stealth cloak and ran right back past them. They just kept running straight, and they completely lost me. It was so fun. The, and they had uh, the, the bubble you could use to reflect people's shots back at them to kill them. So when you kill somebody, you can take all their stuff. And then, like, so what I would do, I was hiding in this little hole. I saw somebody run by. I popped the stealth. I ran out. I hit him with the rifle butt to knock him down. And then I charged a sniper shot while they were getting up and knocked him out, grabbed all their stuff, and then ran back to my hidey hole. Like, <laughs> yes, I have it all now. <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh, man. But, Whoa, uh... but then if you die, you get turned into a robot. Yep. Not, not unless you were on my team. Yeah, what happened on your team, Freelancer? <laughs> Breaking the game. I don't know if you if you can zoom ahead, you'll probably see it, Bridger. You might be able to skip ahead there, but uh, yeah, going back to the uh, cough cough uh, gem store. So we bought, we actually purchased those eighteen thousand gems or so, right? And uh, bought like I think one hundred forty boxes of fun. All right, and we were just gonna have these massive snowball fights between guildmates. Okay. Well, it turned out I had like 60 left, and uh, I'm sure you'll see my inventory pop up or something, but I had 60 left during this event, and I, uh, I laid them down because it was towards the end of the event, and I'm, a, I'm a, um, like one of those little robots. I died. And I'm like, okay, well, let me just mess around and troll people and see if I can just light boxes. Fine. Well, I transformed, and then when I transformed back, I was a human again with a rifle. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? So I started, I was like, no, this can't be. ArenaNet could not have possibly overlooked this. Sure enough, if you had potions or if you used a box of fun 
and transformed into a creature or whatever, when you transform back, you were back in the game. And that was, it was like, you gotta be kidding me. So when we started noticing other people figuring it out as well, it was like a mass exodus to lay as many boxes of fun by your spawn point as possible. So <laughs> we had, uh, like, I laid maybe 30 or 40 at different major points, um, you know, so that all the robots, when they died, they can go and transform back. And it ended up being like a an epic respawn battle. Like right there, you might see me doing it there. Or maybe I was just But right falling. now you're just falling. This was like one of the things that we saw on our server. Our server didn't figure out the whole... Uh, our, our little portal, our, our, our instance of this game, didn't figure out the boxes of fun. So we had like the two people left on our team being followed around by an army of protected robots <laughs> that would yeah, watch that over them and drop little shields to make sure that an enemy couldn't hit them. It was freaking hilarious. And then another thing was I had a commander icon, okay? This changed everything completely dynamically <laughs> where instead of a, like a survival of the fittest, I was now like a mosquito magnet, and, <laughs> and because, everybody because from the enemy mile teams could away, see it, right? But yeah, everybody would just follow me, and I'm like, why is everybody following me? And then I realized I had my commander buff still on. So everybody following me, plus being able to lay down boxes of fun, having them resurrect this undead army. <laughs> it, it was it was it was really fun for the first part, and then it just got really broken because then other people caught on to it as well, and. Next thing you know, by the end of the round, everybody had like 15, 20 people alive again. So and I, that was I think the, the day. whole idea was amazing, though. I, uh, if they bring in this plus the zombie mode, um, like for some crazy like holiday event and they plan it ahead of time, um, can you imagine? I mean, if this is just two weekends worth, imagine all the other fun things they're going to create. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thinking like a survivor or something like that, you know, or something crazy. But, um, yeah, this was a huge, huge thing. It was a lot of fun. Man, are you kidding me? This has got to be like one of the mini games that's constantly available in like Lions Arch. Like this should be the Lions Arch mini game, right? <laughs> oh man, yeah. it was so much fun. I think fun. they should do it in a smaller map though. I think it would have been mm. way more fun if it wasn't in such a big zone because at the beginning, you know, when you had like the practice rounds, like getting used to what was happening, but it just felt like when you died, you ran forever to get to something interesting. And, you know, I wish it was just kind of in a more condensed area. That's about the only criticism that I had of the yeah. whole thing is that basically it was too large of a zone. And what they try to do is they put those ammunition refill stations out on the map to try and basically force players to come together. And in the instructions, it said that the ammunition stations would deactivate over time so that by the end of the match, there would only be one available. So you'd have to kind of go there to get ammunition back. I think that would have been fantastic if they'd kind of done it with rations, kind of like the cornucopia yeah. thing in the Hunger Games. Like you have to come back here. Otherwise you're in trouble kind of a thing. That would be really interesting. Uh, if food started disappearing from the normal spawns and would only appear near the ammunition station, now you actually be, yeah. would draw people back for the final end game. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can you believe there's people on Reddit that were like, there was a stupid event. I don't think they were on TeamSpeak with all their friends going, Roger. oh my God, it's the Hunger Roger. Games. Roger, it's Reddit. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think it must have been people that were playing solo because even the people that died literally like a couple of seconds in, like they just <laughs> ran in, was like, woo, and then died. They still had so much fun, like in my guild, because there was about 75 of us on Mumble and we were all just laughing and having fun and we were all on different teams. So we had the competitive side. And I think literally they must have literally just been playing the game on their own and had no friends to find it not fun. <laughs> but you know, having no friends is uh, kind of an advantage in Survivor sometimes. All right. <laughs> Let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. The game is known as Keg Brawl. Let's see what we got going on here. This is, in fact, one of the most crazy things I have ever seen. We're taking this footage courtesy of Kai's channel, actually. Oh, yay! <laughs> This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. The reason that we're bringing this footage here is because I didn't actually play it. I forgot it was there. Oh, I thought I hit it. The stupid thing never runs it. There it is. So, <laughs> you can see she's about to throw the beer down on the ground and actually st like make the person behind her like slip. Like they're trying to catch her and she hits the, the spill ale and whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought the whole point was to retrieve the keg. You can't just dump it out on the ice. Oh, it's delicious, though. 
And there's all these moves that can, like, steal the keg and knock it out of people's hands. It looks phenomenally fun. I can't believe we didn't think about doing something like this for, like, with the guild freelancer. It was freelancer. amazing. It was so much fun. But it literally, a bit like Freelancer's commander icon, the whole guild was like, yay, I get to kick Kai in the head. <laughs> and everyone just, like, teamed up against me and just kept kicking me. And I was just like, <laughs> But, yeah, it was, it was literally the funnest thing I have ever done. And I'm uploading more videos of it. And they get better as they go along because we kind of understand what's going on a bit more this was the first one and we were all just like what are we doing what do we do and, well so what yeah. is the objective there's some people in the chat going so right. what, what do you do here so there's two teams it's kind of a bit like basketball in the sense that, like there it starts off with like one keg the basketball and you've got to take that keg to either side the red and the blue team so you pick up the keg and you can run back to your team and you deposit it to the npc but everyone on the opposite team can kick you, punch you, stun you, um, knock you back, pour ale on the floor so you slip over, and they can steal the keg off you. So you're kind of like this battle. And then throughout the match, more and more kegs spawn. So whilst you're focusing on one, there could be another one. And some sneaky person's like, ha ha, another keg, take that one. So you end up just like having this massive kind of brawl where people are kicking and punching and stunning each other whilst trying to retrieve kegs for your team. It is so much fun. It, the only criticism I have is that you can't join up as a team. You join up individually, even if you are in a party. So me and my guild were trying to do it as an organized event, but we were kind of like all with random people, which is the only downside. But literally, you have to try it as soon as it launches because it's so much fun. So, I can't so believe this I is where all the Guild Wars 2 esports stuff is here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This uh, is, I mean, we, yeah. we're going to see a spectator mode for this before. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It's so much fun. Like, we, uh, I can't, can't imagine, like, how many people spent and so Wait a minute, so wait a minute. Let's do the test. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The keg is about to spawn. Kai's team making their way towards the center. Oh, no, dog back. I can't believe it. The keg is going to be here. There it is. And Kai's team picks it up anyway, despite being knocked back. Now, the other team too far away. But the keg is getting kicked and thrown and punched and passed from one to the other. Yet again, ladies and gentlemen, four to zero. I can't believe it. That's the game. I think we can do it. It's definitely got potential. You yep. totally can. It's so much fun. It is so awesome. Does that mean tournaments? for keg brawl now there's is got it we gotta have a tournament for keg brawl the prize has to be like a legendary weapon <laughs> like the worst <laughs> legendary weapon the one that nobody wants the rainbow unicorn <laughs> the, the unicorn bro <laughs> Well, when they introduced mini games originally, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, chat room, but I'm pretty sure that they said there would be leaderboards, and that's why I was into mini games. But they didn't seem to have them in the beta weekend. Mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that there is like a permanent leaderboard because I want to be on top of that, like the keg brawl master. Absolutely, that's my goal in life. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be like my little hidden pleasure, like when the guild's not paying attention and I'll sneak over, <laughs> I'll sneak over and own everybody in Cape Brawl and I'll come back to like, where you been freelancer? I'll just trade a post, you know. <laughs> It's, it's, seriously, it's good anger management. If you're annoyed at something or PvP's not going your way or whatever, just go into Cape Brawl and just kick some people in the face. Because the animation so for them fun. hitting the ground is so satisfying. Oh, that looks yeah. like they broke a rib. Uh, <laughs> now, there are going to be other mini-games. They've discussed a couple of them, and some people found in this beta weekend a reference to Polymock, which was a sort of turn-based sort of Pokemon-style fighting with, with your mini-pets, and it seems like they're bringing that back because we found some references to a Polymock arena in, in sort of like a, a just an empty a surrogate in the in the in the Radisson area and then somebody somehow found their way down to it like there's some images on Reddit I don't have in front of me but that that sounds cool I can't wait to see what's going on with that I mean are you guys excited Polymock the Pokemon game is coming back no I gotta get mini pets now more <laughs> things I need to get in this game oh, not only do you need Why? to get mini pets you have to get the right mini pets because you can't just go oh, with Char no. with Charmander if stupid Gary chose Squirtle you know, you can't just do that. You I'm have hoping to collect that them somebody in Arena Net was a big like Final Fantasy eight, nine, and ten, or I don't think ten had it. Nine and eight and nine at least. You know how you could collect the cards. I don't know if you played it, Bridger, but you can collect cards and then battle other players in game with the cards, and you have mm -hmm. a chance of losing or gaining cards. Would that not be like friggin' awesome with mini pets? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the, uh, ga the game has my... to be good though, because the game, as far as I could tell, in the, I, I mean, I think I saw the the card game you're talking about, and I remember it being pretty interesting. It had some strategy. Yeah. Like if 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 they added some sort of random factors with the mini pets, like aside from you know most people just have them cosmetically, but 
let's be honest there. There were some mini pets that were just like, I don't even understand why this is a mini pet. Like, I can't get over, like, I, I traded all the mini pets. I had a ton of them, but I could not just, I couldn't relate to the miniature human ones. Me know? neither. <laughs> uh, like, they just seemed to just be out of place. But I could see them a little bit more being useful if you could, you know, battle them, you know, in a polymock arena. So exactly. if they do something like crazy like that, where you can just get random stats or something, you know, maybe like a rare mini pet has slightly buff stats in one way or another. Yeah, that's like a whole nother level. That would be awesome. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, whew, where are we at now? 8-12. Uh, we got a whole lot more to talk about here, ladies and gentlemen, but I think we are going to take a short break here. Uh, just sort of to allow the host here to to refresh ourselves, and we're going to reset the stream so that I can upload it in two parts once we're done here. So uh, please stay tuned. You might have to reload the stream, but or if you just wait a second, it'll come back. Uh, what we're going to do is talk about when we get back, world versus world. We're going to show you how to defend a tower against Fort Aspenwood. Great was there. I believe he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. uh, and we've also got a lot more to talk about. New things in World vs. World. We've got Sentries. Supply doesn't even build instantly anymore. The Commander book is 100 gold. That's a bit of a controversy in some circles. The World vs. Yep. World had a lot of cap issues this week. We're going to talk about all of that. Dynamic events, personal story, and structured PvP when we come back. So stay tuned, guys. It's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. 